Well, now that we have um, our KKT conditions and we've proved it, how do we actually use these things? How do these things actually uh, help us? Let's look at an actual example where we can use the KKT conditions to actually find the minimizer of a function. So here's a function, um, 2x1 squared plus 2x1 x2 plus x2 squared take away 10x1 take away 10x2, subject to two different constraints. So I've got to be inside uh, this particular circle or on the boundary of a circle centered at the origin. Uh, it's you know radius less than uh, of radius uh, root five, uh, and I've got to be you know on some on one side of this straight line, three uh, x one plus x two is equal to six. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use the KKT conditions to actually uh, figure out the solution to this. So the idea is that we can use these conditions. So there are my KKT conditions, and I've written them out in full this time, so my summation is over all of the active constraints, just uh, all of the constraints, sorry, rather than just the set of active constraints. Uh, that's the sum from i equals 1 to m. Uh, I've got my slackness, complementary slackness condition there, which either says either the constraint is activated, in which case g i uh, of x star is equal to 0, or lambda i uh, is equal to 0, uh, and that constraint's turned off. All my constraints have got to be less than or equal to 0 at the minimizer. Um, and my, uh, uh, my Lagrange multipliers, lambdas, have got to be greater than or equal to zero. So we need the gradient of f, we need the gradient of g, uh, we need all of this stuff. Um, you know, we need to write my constraints, g1 and g2, in that form, uh, g, uh, g of x is less than or equal to zero. So I've got to pull the five and the six over to the left-hand side, so both of those expressions, so that I've got my... Um, uh, my convex set. And then I need to write down, I need the gradients of all of these things. Uh, so I need the gradient of f, which is written there, the gradient of g, which is written, uh, gradient of g1 and g2, which are written at the bottom. Uh, and then, you know, I've written down, we've got the Hessian um, there. So we've got the Hessian of x, um, and that's positive definite, um, as you can pretty much see from looking at that, um, which means that f is convex. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're good to go uh, and use the, the KKT conditions. So what we need to do, so let's actually look, uh, go, to the, um, go to the board here and look at what the KKT conditions uh, look like, right? So the KKT1 is this gradient of f uh, plus the sum of lambda times my gi's is equal to zero. And with the particular functions that we've got, uh, it looks like that. So there's my gradient of f, there's my gradient of g1, there's my gradient of g2. The g1 and g2 are multiplied by two Lagrange multipliers, they're equal to zero. That's my complementary slackness condition, so either constraint g1 will be activated uh, and that'll be equal to zero, lambda 1 will be positive, or uh, it won't be activated and lambda 1 will be equal to, uh, will be equal to zero. Um, and the same for the second constraint. So I've got complementary slackness conditions for the two constraints. That's just saying that G1 and G2 have got to be less than or equal to zero, uh, and my Lagrange multipliers, lambda 1 and lambda 2, have got to be positive. So we've got to solve these equations, right? Um, now, they're pretty nasty equations to solve, right? So equations uh, in four variables here, which is a bit of a mess. Um, they're nonlinear, they're nasty. Um, and most importantly, I don't actually know which, um, which constraints are going to be active here. Right? Until I know x star, I don't know which constraints are going to be activated. And there's a few different options. So this picture actually goes through and it shows us all the different options of which constraints could be activated. So the brown circles there show you what my, um, my cost function f of x looks like. So the global minima is going to be up here somewhere at about you know, 0, 0,5, something like that, and you could show that. Um, but the region that I'm minimizing over is this uh, region that's way off to way off underneath here. And so either, you know, there's you know, five different things that could happen here. Right? So I could have neither constraint activated, which means that the minimizer, the, uh, the minimum could be somewhere in the center uh, of this convex set of this uh, uh, region defined by the constraints being uh, negative. 
Um, or I could have uh, constraint one be activated, which means I'm, uh, the minimizer would be somewhere on the blue circle here. Uh, or the constraint uh, could be, uh, the second constraint could be active, in which case the minimizer would be somewhere on the red line. Or if both constraints are active, right, so then I'd have to be at the intersection at one of these, uh, the intersection of the line and the circle at one of those points. So, you know, uh, five different sort of general places um, that the minimizer could be, uh, you know, I guess four different things that could happen. Either neither constraint, constraint one, constraint two, or both constraints. And so actually when we're doing um, the KKT conditions, uh, we should, we actually need to go and test all of these different, uh, all of these different options. And so that is what we go and do, right? So the first thing, uh, that could happen is that I could have neither constraint activated, right? So the, the simplest case in some ways uh, is that, um, you know, I of x uh, is zero, so neither constraint is activated, which means that the minimizer uh, would be somewhere in the center, right? It would be uh, somewhere in the center of the green, in the middle of the green region. Now, if that's the case, right, if neither constraint uh, is activated, then that means that g1 of x uh, is, less than, is less than zero, and g2 of x is less than zero as well. Right, so in other words, you know, maybe I'll just write uh, that these two things are not equal to zero, so there's strict uh, inequalities there, not less than or equal to, uh, and that means that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are equal to 0, right? If these constraints, either of these constraints are activated, uh, then lambda 1 uh, and, or, and or lambda 2 would be non-zero. Um, if they're inactive, then, I, then these bits are not equal to 0, which means that lambda 1 and lambda 2 have to be equal to 0, okay? So if lambda 1, neither constraint's active, my Lagrange multipliers have got to be equal to zero, which means that in KKT1, those bits disappear. So we need to solve just the first bits of KKT1. So I need to solve 4x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 10. 2x1 plus 2x2 uh, is equal to 10, right? So that's solving just that bit, plus zero, plus zero is equal to zero. So we get those two um, equations. Uh, what does that give me? Well, you can go and solve that, um, those equations, so that gives me actually x1 equals zero, x2 equals five. All right, let's come back to the picture. What's that point? Well, as you might expect, you know, that's the unconstrained uh, uh, that's the unconstrained minimum of this problem. So if neither constraint is activated, right, if I'm not on the boundary uh, of either constraint, then all of this garbage that I've drawn down here doesn't matter and I've just minimized, I've just solved, uh, found the minimizer of the entire problem, right? Uh, but in that case, uh, in that case I'm not inside uh, this circle here, right? So I'm not inside so in particular, this constraint's not going to be activated, right? Uh, it's not going to be uh, satisfied. So then x1 squared plus x2 squared take away 5. What's that equal to? x1's equal to 0. Uh, two, uh, 5 squared is equal to 25 take away 5. That's equal to 0. Uh, sorry, that's equal to 20, uh, which is not which is not less than or equal to 0. Okay, so KKT. T3 is not satisfied. And basically what that does is that checks uh, that um, this can't be the case. Right? This can't be my minimizer. So the case when neither constraint is activated doesn't work. It doesn't satisfy the KKT conditions. In particular, it doesn't satisfy that condition. So it can't be... Um, uh, it can't be a minimizer, and I can stop. So that's one out of the four cases done, 
Now, technically, what I need to do is I need to go through all of the other cases. So there's three more. I could have a constraint one activated, need to check that. Constraint two could be activated, check that. Or both could be activated, and technically, I need to check that. Let's do this constraint uh, where just constraint one is activated. And that means, coming back to the picture, uh, that my minimizer would be somewhere on the blue circle. All right? So I need to uh, um, see whether that satisfies the KKT conditions. So if constraint one is activated only, then that means constraint two is not activated. And so that means lambda two is equal to zero. OK? So if only the first constraint is activated, the second constraint is not going to be activated. That's not going to be equal to zero, which means that lambda two has to be equal to zero, which means that disappears. Anything with the lambda two in it disappears. So I can write down KKT one. In that case, it's going to be four X one plus two X two take away 10 plus two lambda one X one is equal to zero. That's the first equation, and the lambda 2 is equal to 0. And the second equation is going to be 2x1 plus 2x2 take away 10 plus 2 lambda 1 x2 is equal to 0. Uh, what else? Um, that's gone. Uh, well, they turn out to be both satisfied. Um, I'm going to have this one here too. Uh, lambda 1 is going to be non-zero. Right? So if lambda 1 is non-zero, I can divide it out. And I've just got that x1 squared plus x2 squared take away 5 is equal to 0, which means that I'm on the boundary of my circle. Right? So x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to 5. That means I'm on the boundary of that circle. So I've got three equations then in three variables. So there's KKT2 down at the bottom. Three equations in three variables. I should be able to solve that. Um, it's nasty to solve this, right? So this is a set of nonlinear equations. Um, how would you solve this numerically? You can't actually come up uh, with a closed form solution for this. Try it, play around with this, try to substitute things into other things. Um, see if you can solve it. You won't be able to. Um, you need to solve this numerically. So actually what you could do there um, is you could uh, use some sort of optimization scheme. right? You could do steepest descent on this. Um, or you know, we're looking for uh, zeros. So if we uh, talked about multidimensional Newton's method, we could use multidimensional Newton's method on this. But you could use some sort of um, optimization algorithm to come up with the solutions to this. Um, let me just uh, write down uh, what we get. Right? So you need to use the other machinery that we've learned in the course to practically solve this, but you can do that. Uh, we could just, we'll just check uh, that this is the solution. X2 and lambda 1 equals 1. So if x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 2, uh, then 1 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5. So that one checks out. Uh, uh, 2 plus 4 take away 10, negative 6 plus uh, 4. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, sorry, uh, 2 plus 4 take away 10 is negative 4. Uh, plus 4 is equal to 0. And it checks out here as well. Uh, 4 plus 4 take away 10 is negative 2. Uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. So that is a solution. And in fact, if you look at uh, if you look at our picture, where is the point 1, 2? It's actually right about where uh, this dot is. And you, know, that, um, uh, you can kind of imagine the other way to recognize that this is going to be the solution is if you imagine what a tangent, uh, what a, um, if I could draw a brown, these brown curves here, Right, one of these level curves of my cost function, there would be a tangent curve at that point. Think about what the gradient um, of, uh, of F looks like at that point, uh, points into the interior, uh, and think about what the gradient, uh, you know, the, the, the negative gradient um, of my 
uh, of my constraint looks like, it points exactly up, you can kind of see uh, that the gradient of G at that point, the gradient of the circle, is equal to the gradient of the cost function pointing in opposite directions at that point, which remember is our, um, our condition for uh, uh, what it means to be a minimizer on these constraints when we're back talking about Lagrange multipliers. So, this is a minimizer. And in fact, it is the minimum is x star equals 1, 2. So because the point 1, 2 uh, with lambda 1 equals 1 and lambda 2 equals 0 solves the KKT equations, we know it is a minimizer. And I'm saying the minimizer because this is, is only one minimizer. It's a convex uh, problem, so it's only got uh, one minimizer. Technically, what I should do here, right, um, and this old, you know, maybe I'll leave this for you to do, um, is we should check the other two conditions. So I've done two out of the four possibilities here. So you could check uh, that Ix, the, you know, if I activate constraint two, or if I activate constraints one and two, they should not satisfy the KKT conditions. And that's a good thing for you to check. So just as um, uh, this example, the, the, the case up the top where I, neither constraint was activated violated one of the KKT conditions, so will these other two and um, will violate different KKT conditions. And the only thing that actually works, the way that we can know that we've got the minimizer is from checking this, um, checking this one example here. So that's how these things work, right? Um, uh, you can go through and you can use the KKT conditions systematically uh, to guarantee that you've found the minimizer of your constrained optimization problem. What's the big problem uh, with this? What's the next thing that we need to figure out? Well, I mean, this was possible to do with two constraints because I only had four things to check here, right? There were only four different cases that I needed to go through. But if I want to do high dimensional uh, optimization, if I wanted to have lots and lots and lots of constraints, uh, thousands, millions of constraints, and this is in the space that we're sort of talking about here, I'd need to go through and check, you know, this combinatorial explosion of all the different combinations of constraints being turned on and off. And so it all falls apart. So actually to solve this in practice, to do this in practice, we need something a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, we need some, uh, we need an algorithm to sort of uh, sensibly uh, search through that space um, of all the possible combinations, uh, which is what we're going to talk about in just a sec. Uh, when we talk about the gradient projection, projection algorithm. <laughs>